And today's task is to continue chasing a little bit of rear drivetrain vibration in this 96 XJ Cherokee. Uh, and to do that, you'll need to jack it up and get... No, I'm just kidding. If you can't crawl under your Jeep, you haven't lifted it enough, or you need a serious diet. And the backstory, I lifted this Jeep three inches, installed a double carton drivetrain, uh, rear drive shaft and so they're a little different than a regular drive shaft in that the angle from the the rear differential the pinion angle here and the drive shaft should they should line up basically there should be about no difference between those two angles you can see the differential clearly pointed down a bit uh, now actually you're shooting for about two degrees because under power the differential wraps that because of the leaf spring suspension uh, so you really want to keep it a couple degrees low uh, due to a recent spring change on this and shackle change it's uh, it's off a little bit so I put a set of um, eight degree shims between the uh, the axle and the springs so you can see it here between the perch and the springs uh, that corrected almost all of it, but not quite enough, and now I have to get a little bit more, and 8 degrees is kind of considered the maximum you really want to go on a spacer, on a shim, so I'm just going to do a drop on the transfer case up there. But first, let's, uh, let's take some measurements and see where we're starting out as far as these angles go. The easiest and the most consistent way to measure the pinion angle is off the bolts on the back of the housing. That gives you a nice, flat, easy to access point. Uh, you can see we have 12.1 degrees here. And using the same phone app to measure the uh, angle on the rear drive shaft, I get 14.5. So uh, we're really close. We're only like 2.4 degrees, which is pretty close to what's recommended. I've, I've actually heard two to three degrees for one of these, but I think in this case the uh, the rear springs are stiffer than most. They're certainly a lot stiffer than the originals, so I'm not getting quite the amount of wind up. And basically, as you accelerate, it's smooth as butter until about 50 miles an hour. By the time you're at 65, you're feeling a vibration that just continues to grow as you accelerate. Um, so I'm hoping that just uh, dropping the, um, the transfer case by about an inch, that'll give me about one more degree of uh, angle correction. So it'll drop the nose of the drive shaft, which will bring it more in line with the pinion angle, which won't change. All right, this is the... This is the uh, transfer case cross member that we're going to be dropping an inch to get the angle we need. Uh, you can see it's held on by a bolt and a nut at each end. Now, strangely, they put, uh, rather than using two bolts, they used a stud, which is threaded in up here, uh, with a nut on it. Now, thing is, um, you folks in the north would probably want to be out here soaking these this hardware in uh, PV Blaster in advance. Uh, this being an Arizona vehicle, I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, so basically, this is a uh, <laughs> this was put on at the factory 28 years ago or so, and as you can see, it really comes off like butter. Sorry about that, you northern guys. Now, there's several ways that you can take this stud out. Um, it occurred to me you could probably take the take the nut off, uh, coat it with some red Loctite to really lock it down, and then screw it on. Uh, probably not totally tight, just so that the threads are fully engaged. After it sets up, that should be enough to back it off. Uh, others have used a large pair of vice grips, just grab the thing and twist it. That's a little dangerous because if it doesn't come off well now you don't know you no longer have a stud you just have a round ish piece of metal sticking out uh, similarly you can use a plumber's wrench uh, though the angles are gonna be a little bit tight to get in there it'd have to be a small one to be able to get in there and really grab this thing uh, 
my preferred method, assuming it's going to work, is to the, use the jam nut method, which is to uh, to get two uh, new nuts. In this case, the threading you need is an M10 by 1.5, and the 1.5 is the threading. And the theory here is you screw on one nut, then you screw on the, the next nut, okay, and you grab a couple wrenches, and hopefully your top wrench is thin enough to fit in there. Let's see, one of these is a 5 8 this your um okay and once you get this bottom nut really 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 tightened down uh with any luck you'll be able to put your other wrench on the top nut which is now jammed against the bottom nut and work it loose okay the bottom nut keeping the uh, that's not doing it And since the jam nut method did not work on getting this stud out, uh, I'm going to have to go to plan B, which is to go ahead and drop the, uh, the cross member far enough to be able to get that. Um, I'm going to think I'm going to use a plumber's wrench on it to twist it out. Um, they're undoubtedly Loctited in at the factory since they don't really plan on them coming out. Um, so the trick here is you definitely, either way, no matter how you take it out, you are going to have to support the cross member uh, with a floor jack or something similar. So uh, I got it set up. You want to you want to shoot for the the middle line of the uh, drivetrain here. Uh, you'll see the the holes that have nuts under them. That's the ones that go to the uh, transfer case uh, mount. So now I've taken the weight off of the uh, hardware here and I can remove the remaining three uh, the remaining three uh, nuts and bolts and now I can just carefully slowly lower the cross member uh, to get enough access here to get to get the um, to get the studs out and to get the spacers in to drop the uh, to drop the cross member so just ever so gently start dropping it And you can see the whole thing coming down. So you don't want to go crazy here because it is putting stress on uh, motor mounts and things like that. Uh, you just need to get it down low enough to work with. And it's it's pretty much unweighted now, so that's kind of its natural state. It's going to stay there. Uh, now the trick is I'm going to use my handy-dandy plumber's wrench here. Uh, this is a great tool because basically once you get it adjusted properly and you get the... Uh, you get the jaws cranked down nice and tight where it can grab that stud. Uh, the harder you push on it, the tighter it gets. So I'm going to go ahead and get it, get it cranked down to uh, pretty darn tight. All right, so it's grabbing it kind of in the middle, and I can feel it. Uh, it would help if I put it on the right way. You got to feel it grab the uh, grab the serrations in the jaws, and there it goes. All right. And you can see it actually coming out up here slightly. Um, so we'll just continue turning.
And there it is, friends and neighbors. That's what you were fighting. Now let's go do the same on the other side. All right, now would be a good time to take a look at our hardware. And here's what we got with our kit. Now there's several different ways to go about this. Sometimes rather than having these big beefy steel uh, channels, uh, you end up with just basically one inch or maybe even slightly larger spacers. Just cylindrical spacers made out of steel, made out of aluminum, made out of plastic for all I know. Um, Basically, obviously, longer bolts to go through. Uh, same threading as the originals. Uh, and, thoughtfully, they did provide a little bit of red Loctite. Uh, that's, that's a good thing. I'm definitely going to use it because that's going to keep these bolts from ever, ever, ever coming out again. Um, so, you'll want to apply it. And, obviously, you want to go ahead and finish up the job once you've applied it. Because it will set up and make it really uncomfortable to... Uh, Keep going the next morning if you stop in the middle after applying this and threading it in part way. So, at any rate, these go in on top of the cross member, which probably should be at least wiped down just a little bit. Uh, again, rust is not really a problem here with a Arizona vehicle, but you can see that this wants to be in this configuration to uh, get the most purchase between the um, the cross member and the frame and that'll be kind of obvious when you line it up the next trick is uh, getting the holes all lined up so that may be a little trickier than it looks and in preparation for getting these things put in what you want to do is put the lock washer on first followed by the flat washer okay so now you've got it ready to go That'll be interesting. So, um, so now I add the, the Loctite and I can start threading in the, uh, the bolts. Now I have tested it to make sure that everything's going to line up, that the spacing and the, and the, the spacers is correct, that the, uh, everything lines back up and so I can tighten it up. And the other thing I did was I got the right socket on my wrench because it, the bolts have gone from the original 15 millimeter heads to 17 millimeter, which, which is fine. It's a it's a pretty high torque application, so uh, that makes perfect sense to me. All right, nice and goopy. All right, once again, line it up, and you're not going to want to tighten these down all the way. Just simply because you've got to do the other side and you're probably going to have to wiggle it around. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run them down reasonably tight. And you can kind of see why I didn't tighten up the other side. Uh, you can see the disconnect between the these holes and these holes. So i got to get this thing pulled back. Uh, that can be the difficulty. Um, I should be able to move the drivetrain around a little bit um, as I need, but in the meantime, let me just lift it closer to the width of the spacer and then start working on getting it moved back in line. And this is the way I decided to handle it. I got my come along, which is serious overkill, but we'll get the job done just fine. And and what you want to do here, folks, is to wiggle everything around. Make sure you got this lined up uh, so you can get your bolts started. And in this case, I'm really, really, really close with the come along in place. Uh, but I got to move the whole, uh, the whole drag, the whole thing to the inside just a little bit. Um, so I'm using a pry bar. Let me use a little bit bigger pry bar. Bigger pry bars make it easier. So 
Uh, that ought to give me the movement I need to get these bolts started. And again, make sure you got them really, really pretty much where you want them before you start. And then we can get the spacer in. And wiggle it around to get started. All right. All right. And let's hope the last bolt goes in properly. All right, they started, so we should be good to go. Make sure, and folks, make sure you get at least a couple turns on them. Uh, before you start really applying pressure because if you don't and you start tightening them down you will have cross threaded them and cause yourself all kinds of grief so at this point okay and I can go and tighten the other side and no longer really need the ratchet strap or the if you're using a come along uh, I can release all that and then just put the final torque on the four bolts. Alright, once again we're Back at the uh, differential, measuring the pinion angle, which is uh, showing 12.2 was 12.1. There, it's in between 12.2 and 12.1. And now let's check the uh, drive shaft angle to see if we made any difference. Okay, and I'm at 11.5, so uh, that's 11.6. So that's uh, something less than a degree. Which is probably about what this uh, this particular setup needs. Uh, you can see, uh, well, I'll give you a better angle. Okay, you can clearly see the transfer case has been lowered. Uh, it is definitely lower. And now if you follow the drive line, the drivetrain back, you can see there's just the tiniest bit of angle between the pinion and the drive, the drive shaft. So uh, we've accomplished what we want to accomplish. Now all that remains is driving it to see how that works out and oh putting up all these tools okay and at fairly full throttle i'm not really getting any vibrations at all okay coming up over 65 70 smooth a tiny bit of vibration but hey it's a jeep This is uh, 75 miles an hour and uh, just the tiniest little bit of uh, vibrate, nothing serious. Whatever I started, uh, by 45 miles an hour the thing was bucking and shaking really bad. Uh, with the original shims it took it down to starting to come on about 65 uh, and got it getting progressively worse as you go faster. And now, eh, it's great. It's a Jeep. I'm happy. Okay, the next step is to test the angle on the front, which is also has is stock on pretty much all four-wheel drive XJs, a double carden joint, so it also needs to be pointing directly at the um, directly at the differential, just like the rear. Um, and so let's see if anything has changed here, uh, because this change we just made affects front and back. So we're at 6.8 degrees on the drive shaft. Let's look at the differential now. All right, using the bolts on the uh, differential, you can see we have four degrees. So we've got a, uh, what's that, 2.8 degree differential, pardon the pun, between the angle of the front differential and the drive shaft. Uh, I suppose that might be because we did the, the, the uh, drop on the transfer case. But at any rate, uh, stay tuned. Obviously, there's another video coming to show you how to fix that. It never ends.